As you read through the scriptures, you see things that sometimes amaze you. Why would the people rebel against the leadership of Moses and Aaron? When God said that Moses was the most humble man that ever lived, but the people still rebelled against his authority. Now, I want you to notice in our reading today, we find the story of the rebellion of the sons of Korah. Numbers chapter 16, beginning with verse 8. Then Moses spoke again to Korah. Now listen, you Levites. Does it seem insignificant to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the community of Israel to be near him so you can serve in the Lord's tabernacle and stand before the people to minister to them? Korah, he has already given this special ministry to you and to your fellow Levites. Are you now demanding the priesthood as well? The Lord is the one you and your followers are really revolting against. For who is Aaron that you are complaining about him? So there came a day when Korah and his family conspired together to incite a rebellion against Moses and against Aaron, the high priest. Look back at number 16, verse 1. One day Korah, son of Izhar, a descendant of Kohath, son of Levi, conspired with Dathan, Abiram, and the sons of Eleb, and one son of Palath from the tribe of Reuben. They incited a rebellion against Moses, along with 250 other leaders of the community, all prominent members of the assembly. Now, I want you to notice together, here is a full-blown rebellion. 250 community leaders joined them. Levites, which are the spiritual leaders, the spiritual tribe leading the way. We, we have a full-blown thing that could have completely destroyed all of the nation of Israel in its very beginnings. Why did the sons of Korah want to rebel? Well, look back at verses 8 and 9. He says to them, Does it seem insignificant to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the community of Israel to be near him so that you can serve in the Lord's tabernacle and stand before the people to minister to them? Korah, he has already given you this special ministry. Then he closes in verse 10. Are you now demanding the priesthood as well? The sons of Korah weren't satisfied with their positions. They weren't satisfied with the place that God had given them of ministry. And because they weren't satisfied, they got into selfish ambition and self-promotion. Now, brothers and sisters, wherever you find rebellion today, you find the same thing. From the beginning of Satan, in his famous I wills, I will exalt myself above the Most High God. Whenever you find rebellion, you find this self-promotion and selfish ambition. They were not happy with the position God had given them. Forgive me. James and John have the same problems in the New Testament. Matthew 20, verse 23 and following. He said, I have no right to say who will sit at my right or my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. But James and John were saying, we want to sit at your left and we want to sit at your right. I would challenge every young pastor today, wherever you're listening, be content with the position that God has chosen for you now. Be content with the place that God has chosen for you now. As you Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. There will come a day that he will exalt you in due time. But don't, don't get like the sons of Korah. Don't get like James and John, the sons of thunder. Don't get into selfish ambition and selfish promotion. Instead, be happy with the place that God has given you. And if necessary, be happy in that place for the rest of your life. Because that is where God will bless you.